not at all. So if you become perfect, I know you've been told that you can't be perfect. You've been told that. Right? But let's see what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. Sometimes what the Bible says is 100% different than what we've been told. Amen? Amen. That's why there's a lot of problems like there is because we're not looking at what the Bible says. So let's look at the book of James. Praise God. The book of James. You know, there was two James. Well, there was at least two James. There was one James that was the Apostle James who was one of the twelve apostles. And later on, Jesus' own brother got saved. His name was James. Yes. And he became a leader. I'm not sure which one wrote this, but I know James the Apostle got killed kind of early on. So I'd be surprised if he wrote this one. So let's look at this. He said, My brethren, count it all joy. Someone say, Count it all joy. Count it all joy. He said, Count it all joy when someone gives you a hundred dollars. Count it all joy. When someone lets you go on a big shopping spree at the shopping mall. Don't say that. I'm saying that exactly. But what does this say? Pastor Benjamin, can you read that verse out loud? Yes. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. All right. When you fall into diverse temptations, called count it all. You know, the Bible itself and the things of God often are contrary to what we think as human beings. And here he's saying, count it all joy when you fall into these diverse temptations. And as we looked on Wednesday, this word temptations is talking about being put to the proof. Well, the Duke wants a double blessing. Right? <laughs> he wants a double reward. Yeah. Don't blame him. <laughs> My brother and come now. So he's saying these diverse temptations, this is being put to the proof, which also in the definition of the Greek means to receive provocation, discipline, and also adversity. Yeah. So it's not necessarily talking about the temptations of sin. He's not saying count it all joy when you feel tempted, you know, to go commit sin. Uh -huh. But in a way, it's a little related. But but what James is saying and what the Word of God is saying, count it all joy when there's so much adversity that comes your way. And when he says when you fall into that term speaks of falling into something that is all around. Uh -huh. So let's say it's talking about your situation. So when your situation becomes adverse, count it all joy when you are surrounded with adversity. Mm -hmm. Amen. When rough things happen, trials happen, yeah. bad news, you know, you might get some bad news. Uh, some things aren't cooperating. Maybe your money is not cooperating. Or maybe maybe people aren't cooperating. Amen. Different temptations. It could be in the family or in your job, in your personal life. Mm -hmm. But he says, why should you count it joy? He says, knowing this, at the trial of your faith, work in patience. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Amen. So when adversity comes, because you know that as you face that, Adversity and faith with Jesus, mm. that it's going to work patience in you, which, yeah. which means endurance. Mm. Amen. It's going to build endurance. It's going to build, which that word patience means cheerful endurance or constancy. Mm. See, when you overcome adversity that comes your way, that makes you stronger in your Christian life. 
Yes. It gives you endurance. See, but when, when those adverse situations come, approach it with joy, saying, okay, this is going to be good. Because yeah. after I get done with this, I'm going to be that much stronger. Yeah. Amen? Amen. When bad things try to come, you know, you've got to cling to Jesus. Yeah. I've been through some things, and many of you have been through some things that are so traumatic. Yes. That it could knock some people on their back. Amen. And they don't want to get up for a long time. But I can remember in certain moments when very, very, very traumatic and devastating things happen. I remember immediately looking at Jesus. Mm. Looking at Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And he ended up being the healer of my soul Amen. And when I needed him. Yes. And I was so uh, hurt or let's say bewildered in one one situation where I actually fell into what you could say like the depression. Mm -hmm. I knew it. Like something just wasn't right with me. <laughs> I was trying to be my old self, which is my Jesus self. <laughs> but I was there, but it was just like being clouded with a depression. You know, I know what that feels like. I even told my doctor about it because I had a doctor's appointment. Regular doctor, he gave me he gave me these pills. He said, "Okay, here, I'm gonna give you this." No, so he had some in his office. He said, "Take these," and those pills actually did work. <laughs> I was like, "I don't know how this pill is working, but I do feel much better." <laughs> Took that pills for about two weeks, and I sit raw. It's supernatural. You know who was on that? What's that street preacher's name? Tom White was on. When, when, in his early days, you know, before anyone knew, knew about him too much, I think that was how he was introduced to the world. But he was on, and Sid Roth asked him to pray for people watching. And first, he's like, okay, and then he starts singing, Lord God, I praise you, you know, something like that, you know, without no music, he just starts singing, and I'm just watching. And then he begins to pray. And, and, and when he said, Lord, touch people, heal people, even people going through emotional problems in their mind and different things like that. And, and when he said that, mm. Jesus Christ took that depression from me. Look at this guy. To just only have it two weeks after the devastating thing that happened. Yeah. And it's hard to explain, but I knew it was gone. I'm like, whoa, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow Jesus did it through that, yeah. that man of God praying. Thank you, Lord. You see, but I was clinging to Jesus the whole time, but I was fighting. That that one was a fight. But he never once stopped leaving Jesus. I was clinging to him more. Yes. In fact, when that devastating thing happened, in about five hours, I had to be at Sunday morning service to preach. <laughs> and we still came. The whole family was devastated. But we still came and nobody knew what happened. And we preached the gospel and praised the Lord. Amen. Like if nothing happened. But God is a mighty, great God that will bring you through temptations. Amen? He will bring you through adversities and bring you through these things that face us in life. Yes. And I could say that endurance or patience must work in my life through that experience. And I'm sure everyone else who was experiencing many traumatic things and people that have gone through other things and still going through, this is what happens when you go through and you, you, you count on all joy. You still praise the Lord. You don't let the devil steal your joy. You don't let him steal your faith. You don't let him steal your confession. You hold fast to confession your faith. Even when things hit you so hard. Yeah. And when you get through it, you will have that much more endurance to serve the Lord, strength to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy.